The recent referendum was the biggest in years. The country has been split and this is a decision that is likely to affect many generations to come. First was the Remain campaign, Remain campaign that believes we, we as a country were economically stronger if by staying in the European Union. They argue that 40%, 44% of, Brit, of British trade exports go to EU countries. This is a huge number and can be argued as being counterproductive if we start putting barriers between that. It's also counterproductive because we are in an ever globalising world and we've got to think about going in the same direction as other major countries and if we're creating barriers between us and our own continent, is this a good idea? Um, around 3 million jobs are directly li linked, with the e linked with the EU and these, these jobs um, aren't necessarily going to stay around if we leave the... If, if we're not getting as much trade with the EU. Businesses are li less likely to invest in if the UK are out, if we're being hit by poor trade and, and have lost these connections with Europe or the European Union. Um, trading advances being in the EU with each other definitely are highlighted in the EU. And if we stay together, Defensively, we are stronger against countries like Russia, who are ever more threatening, and ISIS, who are always targeting Europe. Um, on another social level, we, if we remain in the EU, we can work, live and retire in any European, any European Union country we want. So if we want to retire in Spain, or work in a different country while we're young, we'd be able to do that remaining in the European Union and wouldn't cost us any money. Uh, there is also the Brexit campaign who believe that Britain will be stronger outside of the European Union and one of the reasoning for this is uh, better self-regulation of the borders. They can control immigration uh, over the last few years we've seen how um, too much immigration can have a strain on the country and the economy and how it can have a strain on the NHS and uh, benefits going out to people. Um, they also think we'd have better control over our laws so we would have more just general control over our country and often people don't like some of the decisions the EU makes and the time it takes to make them through going all these committees they can it, it can sort of have a lag effect and sometimes be inefficient um, more uh, lower corporation tax could it also come into play which people would argue could even make Britain fl flourish after Bre Brexit as there would be more jobs and uh, yeah there would be more jobs available for people um, the Brexit campaign also argued that the three hundred. They said that three hundred and fifty million pound um, the UK was spe sending to the EU, uh, when in fact this is not true. Um, this was actually just an estimate made by the Treasury of how much input. Um, the UK puts into the EU, so this is not money we're sending them, this is just um, how how much productivity we're putting into it, so this is this can't really be used as a valid way of saying the best valid excuse for leaving Europe. Um, capital, they also, the they also say that capital flight is nonsense. They do believe that London will remain a leading financial centre and that it won't be affected by Brexit. Uh, many banks will also want to headquarter themselves in London due to the low tax rates, which um, we, we shall wait and see since leaving Europe. Um, the immediate effects of the Brexit vote that we, that the country decided to 
um, leave the European Union meant that uh, there was a devaluation of the pound. Um, before Brexit, one pound was worth $1.50. Um, that was on the 23rd of June, but now we are trading at about uh, one one pound to one dollar thirty, which is f which is the lowest since the mid eighties actually, and uh, currently now the pound is the worst performing currency, which is from Bloomberg. Um, however, this does make the pound more competitive, so we might we will see uh, an increase on the, of exports due to this. Um, many companies on the FTSC 100 index generate their revenue from overseas anyway so a fall in sterling if anything will boost their earnings value which is beneficial um, interest rates have kept at 0.5% after that they've been since that since May 2009 although um, not a penny of the so-called 350 million, which was not very true anyway, has gone into the NHS since Brexit. And um, we'll, we will need to see, since with um, Article 50, we have two years to make new trade agreements with the EU. So we'll have to see how those trade agreements went. But um, pros pros Brexit, Britain will need a new trade deal with with Europe. Uh, it's entirely possible that tariffs will be imposed on the UK's goods and goods and services under a new trade deal. Um, during the negotiations, it wouldn't be surprising to see uh, Brussels seeking a five percent tariffs on UK car exports and really they just want to um, uh, they, they want Britain to have to pay now to enter the single free market uh, through tariffs really and what may happen is that ta uh, the UK will start paying not into the EU fund but into a, a different EU fund that grants the maxes to the single market which may mean they're in for a soft Brexit instead of a hard Brexit and this could really help out the UK and really make it an easier, a softer landing uh, coming in uh, to Brexit and all the uncertainty that lies ahead.